Probably. <laughs> okay. I think we're live. Hello, everybody. Hello. And we're about to be live on... Uh, on Facebook, right? Yep, on Facebook. So we're going there right now. There we go. We're there. Uh, Hello, something. Facebook. Not quite yet. flowers. So we're just waiting for everybody to come on. Oh, we got some people here. Hi, Nicole, Natalie, Alicia, Christy, Sherry. How are you guys? Hi guys. How's everybody doing today? So if you've got any questions, put them in the Q&A. And if, you, uh, if you've got any comments, just add them to chat and I'll ask Kathy. And I think that's true. The live part of Facebook Live. Okay. Now I got to turn off my sound. Okay. And okay, we got a couple people there too. Oddly enough, some of the same people. Nicole, you're in both spots, which I find entertaining. Um, thank you, Nicole, for seeing us twice as often. Uh, so there you go. Hi, Sherry. Yep. Okay. And we got a few people watching there too. So I think, uh, we're up. Why don't we start? Okay, so, cool. Uh, a couple things just to kind of kick this off, make my introductions. So who's Kathy? Kathy, um, I met Kathy through a friend of mine and uh, Kathy trains, uh, she works in New York and she trains all these uh, new face painters that work for this entertainment company. That correct, correct statement? Yes, yes I do. Yes, she does. And so Kathy is a great person to teach sort of how to do some basics of face painting. So this is really targeted towards uh, beginning face painters, although you can always learn something new. Um, and this is gonna be focused on today on flowers. And um, the other thing is we're introducing our brand new face paint. Um, uh, we've, it, it actually is on the shelves now. Uh, so we, we're getting the promotions out and everything else, but this is the first time to talk about it. Here they are. Here they are. All their glory. Uh, perfect. Yep, you can see them. Actually, I'm going to have to, somehow I can only see the one window. So I'm going to have to turn the other one off. So now you've seen Kathy. I am, uh, I'm turning her off. So I think that'll work. Uh, okay. okay. Spotlight video. Okay, there we are. There we are. Now, now we got. Now we got that. Um, to answer your question, uh, Sherry, uh, we're based out of New York City. Yep, New York. Maybe you can see it better like this. Yeah, you can. Here's one. This is the um, Splash Twelve Split Cake. Mm -hmm. And this is the Fundamentals Twelve Color Palette. It is. It is. And they come with two brushes, each one. They come with a tiny round brush. This looks like maybe like a number one or yeah. a zero, maybe even smaller than that. Mm -hmm. And then another, like a chisel brush. Okay. Also pretty small. Okay. 
Uh, you're in Albany? Yep. Albany is, is fantastic. Uh, New Yorkers, gotta love them. Hmm. I've never been to Albany. It's, it's, you know, it has the best highways in the entire state. You, you drive yeah. in Albany and it's fantastic. No, uh, there we go. Now we can see them. I need to give you some incentive to watch this. I'm going to give you a code later on so you can buy these very pallets um, for 25% uh, off. Nice. Yeah. So that'll come later. I'll give you incentive. How much do they retail for? Uh, that's a remarkably good question. I actually should know the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is that, isn't it? Um, uh, they are... The people would like to know. The people would like to know. So, uh, the craze 12 color palette, the, the fundamentals color, is 25 bucks. The six one, six dollar one is 15.50. And um, the uh, split cake palettes are face paints palettes. Are there, that's $42. Awesome. Okay. So this one is 42. Yeah. And this one is 25, right? Yeah. Perfect. All comparable to our lo local competition. <laughs> and all you can find on facepaint.com. Facepaint.com uh, is absolutely right. Okay. So okay. can we get started? Absolutely. Let's go. Okay, perfect. I have 10 flowers here on my list. Hopefully we can get through all of them. Whoa, 10 flowers? Yes. Woof. But if not, you know, there's always next time. Okay. So just in case anybody's worried about this or annoyed by it, I'm, I'm focusing on the, the, the camera where we're seeing her, what she's drawing rather than on uh, Kathy. Uh, it's not because I don't like Kathy. It's not because of anything like that. It's just that she is, um, uh, last time people said, ah, I can't see what she's drawing so well. So we're going to focus on that. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to start out with the easiest one, in my opinion, which is, I guess you call it like a little forget-me-not. It's a little five-point flowers. And I'm going to use a petal brush. And I'm going to start with white. Okay. Just load it up really well. If it's a little too wet, I'm going to move to a side that's drier. Okay. So after the white, let's do, let's use this blue, nice blue, this royal blue. So I'm just going to put the tip of the brush in the blue. And we did this flower in our last uh, webinar, but I'm going to just touch on it really quick since it's part of the flowers class now. Mm -hmm. All right, so for this one, I'm going to use my arm because it's a lot easier to do it like this. All right, so all you're going to do is Hold the brush down at maybe a 45 degree angle and you're going to push down and keep going around so you've made your five petals. And that's basically the flower. You can also do other variations, which you press down twice for each petal. And they look kind of like hearts, like tiny little hearts, like this. So that's another variation of the same mm -hmm. flower. And uh, let's see. And you can also do more than five petals, if that's how you're feeling.
closer to like a daisy. Now you can see my brush is getting kind of dry. The colors don't look as vibrant on this one as they do on this one. So I'm gonna reload. And let's grab a different color. Let's do red. And this red is super pigmented. So it really is gonna pop against the white. Now this is a design, it's not necessarily a flower, but it kind of looks like lavender almost. I start, I'm gonna do it from here all the way to here. So I'm going to start from the farthest point and kind of press down and then I'm going to alternate sides so that you guys can see what I'm doing and go down like this and there we go. So these I would usually do on a face like this, I'll show you how to make them into a really quick face design. Let's get her over here. So I'm gonna start here. And I'm going to put a flower here. I'm going to put one here. I really like this design because it works on adults and children, especially mm -hmm. the, the little ones. If the little ones can stick around long enough, which, you know, if you're practiced at it, this can go by pretty quickly. And let's put one here. Like how many flowers can you do without reloading? Um, let's say just now one, two, three, four, five, I'd say. Okay. Maybe. It depends. But as you can see, this one's a lot brighter than this one over here. Exactly. So as you're going along, they kind of fade a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you don't always have to completely rinse out your brush when you're doing these flowers. And my brush still has some white on it. All I did was mainly rinse out the bottom. And I'm just gonna go back in to the white. And what you can also do, if you have time, is take a paper towel and just clean off the tip of the brush and add a tiny, like minuscule amount of paint just to the tip, I mean, uh, of water just to the tip, mm -hmm. and then reload. Can't see you reloading right now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go sit down, baby. You can tell this is live, can't you? <laughs> yeah. I have three-year-old twins, so they are very loud. Okay, so now I've reloaded. And you can go over these the like the last flowers you did, just make them a little bit brighter if you want to. And so now from here, I'm gonna do that wheat design. And to fill in the spaces around the flowers. Mm -hmm. And this is a cute little flower mask. Mm -hmm. That's also very fast. Cool. So one more step. I'm gonna take a round brush. This is a number four. I can't see you loading up. Oh, sorry. No worries. There we go. There you go. Number four. You. 
And you're gonna wanna get it pretty loaded because we're gonna do some dots. And for dots, you want your brush to be kind of wet. So you're just gonna throw down a few dots. The more pressure you put, the bigger your dot is gonna be. The lighter you press, the smaller it is. And then just do like three or four little dots in the middle of each flower. And then I usually put some dots in the middle of these. I think it's off to the side now. Oh, sorry. Put some dots in the middle of these clusters, like that. There you go. Just to kind of end it off. Yeah. But if I go over there, this camera's off. Oh. <laughs> okay. So basically, you can end your design just like that. And if I wasn't explaining it, <laughs> um, it would probably take me maybe two minutes to do the whole, the whole thing. Because it's just the same movement over and over again, and then you stop up with some dots. Um, you can also add some swirls and teardrops around here if you want to be like extra fancy. But usually I found that it's not needed. But it's also an option. Okay. Well, that's terrific. So this is my flower mask. And sometimes I would, you can sponge in a, a rainbow cake over the eye area over here to add a nice little background, maybe like a metallic gold or metallic white or um, some kind of really um, like a pastel colored split cake. Something that won't overpower the design too much because there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh -huh. So, let's take that off. Okay. So now, let's do the rose. That's the second one on my list. And this one is my favorite flower to do. I'm going to use the split cakes for this one. And this is an angled chisel brush. This one is a Paint Pal brand. Oops, sorry. And this is, I believe it's a one inch. Okay. A one inch, maybe three quarters. It's one of those two. Yeah, it's, it fits almost the entire split cake. Yeah, I would say that's most likely three quarters, but I couldn't swear to it. It, it could be. But either, either one is fine for this purpose. If you use a one inch, your petals would just be a tiny bit bigger. Uh, you used a petal brush, you said, for the flower, somebody asked? Yeah, the, this brush. Can you see that? Uh, sort of, it's kind of a little blurry. There, it's pretty petal, yep. Paint pile, pretty petal, and it looks like this. You can also use a bigger round brush if you don't have a pretty petal brush. Um, let me see if I can find a good example of something like this. My brushes are kind of old. This one I just got from a craft store, but so you can get the idea of what the brush would look like. It would be about this size. These have longer bristles, so it's a little bit harder to do the short and fat petals of the flower I just went over. But if you just press down halfway, don't press down the entire length of the brush, press down about halfway, you'll still be able to get this same effect using a regular round brush. Uh, another question came in from Michelle, and I like this question. Thank you, bless you, Michelle. Um, is uh, what, what split cake palette was that? Wait, I can't hear you. What split cake palette was that? Oh, the split cake palette. The Splash 12 cake split cake palette. From Craze, this is our, our own brand of face paint, uh, Michelle. Yeah. So I will. So you can find it at facepaint.com. You can find it at facepaint.com. <laughs> and there will be a coupon code. 
Yes, there will. Might as well bring that out right now. Well, why, why, why keep the people in suspense? Yeah, let them know. Let them know. That's a good thought. So um, the code is going to be uh, twenty percent off, and it's um, the code on facepaint.com is Kathy V, as in Victor. Oh, 20. I got my own code. You got your own code, Kathy. I made it, guys. And it expires. It only lasts for one day. So it expires July 31st, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, you guys better get your kits. You got you to rush out. You got to rush out. So yeah. this is for any Craze FX face paint. And 20% is really good because these, these are really affordable. Yeah, yeah. The quality that you get with them is um, is really good for the price point. Because as you're about to see, the colors are very vibrant. Okay, so this is my favorite one from the palette. And for the roses, because I'm using an angle brush, this side is going to be what's on the outside. So usually for the roses, I go lightest color on the outside to darkest on the inside. It helps create natural shadows and makes your flowers look more realistic. So, right here. so I'm just going to load up this brush. So you want your brush to kind of glide across the paint. If it's getting stuck, then it's a little bit too dry. And you want to just barely dip it in the water, add a tiny bit more water to finish loading it up. Now, let's see. I'm going to try to do it here. If it's not working out, we'll use my brush. So what I like to do before I start a rose is to space out my petals. So we're going to make like a star here. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. It's a little zoomed in. It's a little hard to see. But okay, it's, I, it, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to make like a star. And this is how you know where to stop and start each one of your petals. So we're going to start here. You're holding the brush kind of at an angle again. Let's see. Maybe this is better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. And right here, you're going to press down and you're rotating the top of your brush like this. You're going from this to this so that the bottom doesn't really move. The bottom of your brush doesn't really move. You're making all the shapes with the top of your brush. And for the rows, I kind of went up down just a little bit like that to create this petal. So now we're going to go around. You don't have to do them in order. And you don't want them all to look exactly the same. And you can have a little bit of space between each one. And sometimes I even like to overlap a little bit. I'm going to reload real quick. Because it adds a tiny bit of realism to the roses. So I'm going to overlap this one so you can see. And now they look more like, you know, actual rose petals. So I'm going to come sideways and try to do this one backwards. So that'll be easier for you guys to see. There we go. Okay, perfect. So this, maybe I should do the hibiscus first. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the hibiscus first because it's the first step of the rose. So. Just hold on a minute. We are going to get some yellow on a round brush. Mm. Oh, sorry. What did the world do before split cakes? I know, right? They just add so much to your designs and it makes it look so, you know, intricate and complicated when it really only took me like 10 seconds to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna take some yellow. And usually I do yellow for the middle of hibiscus flowers, no matter what color 
my petals are, but it just happens to match today. And I'm going to drop the brush down and twist while I drag it up. So I'm basically making a teardrop. So I'm going like that and then took things to drag it up. My paint is kind of wet, so that's why you're getting that separation there. It was a little bit drier. Good workout. Okay, so I go just a tiny bit above the actual flower itself. And then we're gonna put some dots. I'm gonna lay a whole bunch of tiny little dots here. And if anybody knows flower parts, you can tell me what this is called. I feel like it starts with an F, maybe. Yeah, the center of the um, flower. The center of the flower. Is. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of white right on top of the same. Stamen, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right too. And just go back like this. Just to make sure it stands out against the rest of the background of the flower. And sometimes if it looks a little too empty here, I'll add some, I guess you call them like flicks mm -hmm. to the middle, just to blow out the design somewhat. And for these, you want your paint to be kind of dry because it's more of like shading than it is trying to do like thick line work. So there we go. That's a hibiscus flower. That's a hibiscus flower. Looks nice. Thank you. So since we got that one off the list, let me just make sure. All right. Now we're going to go back to the petals again. We're going to do the rose. So the rose is basically the same thing I just started except you build on top of it. Okay, so really quick, I'm gonna do the, the little star. It doesn't have to be perfect because flower petals are not all perfectly identical in size and shape. Um, here for the video i'm gonna rotate the board but you know in real life you can't really rotate somebody's face sorry my phone stand is not very long so it keeps bumping the brush But that's okay, we got it. Yep. All right, so there we go. You don't have to worry if this is not completely filled in because you're going to go over with the puddles right now. And you want to let that part dry. Anytime you're going over a split cake with another paint, whether it's split cake or just line work in a solid color, you wanna make sure whatever's on the bottom is dry before you continue or else you'll get, you know, what happened here where there's like a space in the middle or your colors will mush together and it'll just look like mud. So I'm going to reload and make sure that my paint is not too wet. And I'm going to show you right up here what I'm going to do in the middle before I do it on the actual rows just so that it gives it some time to dry. Okay, so now we're going to make a little, I call it like an N, and then you're gonna come, let's see if I, this is better. And then you're gonna start on one side, rotate just the top. I can't and, see it right now. Can you see that? I can just see your fingernails and the, yeah, perfect. That's better. So right here, and you're going to go down. 
come around to the other side like that. So that's the middle. And then I'm going to reload again just a little bit. Whoops. And let's start on this side. So you're going to start right there, right where this pedal ends. You're going to start right there. Let me move this back because I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this without hitting my phone. But let me see if I can do this. All right, so you can start right here, push the brush down, and you're gonna rotate the bottom and kind of bring just this part forward. So I went like this. Can you guys see that pretty clearly? Mm -hmm. Here, rotate, and then bring it down this way. All right? And then the second one is gonna start on this side. And I'm just using the tip of the brush right here. I'm not gonna use the whole entire brush because this is a tiny little space that I need to fill. And if I use the whole brush, it's gonna cover too much of the design. So I'm gonna start right here, like that. And rotate and push down and come right on the top. So what I did was right here, pressed down just with the corner and dragged it across the front, like that. And you want to make sure that you're that you reload if you need to, because to have these two pedals to be very uh, bright is important, or else you won't be able to distinguish the pedals in the middle of your rows, and it's going to look mushy. So I'm just reloading again. Now I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it here. And usually I'll go in between two pedals. So I'm going to go in between these two pedals. Make this part. And uh, I can't that. see it right now. Yeah. Uh, no, a little farther up. Perfect. Okay, hold on a second. Sorry, the angles are kind of weird. No. Okay. So like this, uh -huh. I'm gonna make the U shape, I mean the N shape, and it's gonna go like that. Okay. And then for the bottom, I'm gonna start here, rotate, bring it around, and come back up on the other side. Okay. Gives it a three dimensional effect. And I'm gonna reload again. And my hand, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little bit of water pooling at the bottom mm -hmm. of my split cake here. You don't want that. That means that your brush is too wet. And that's when all the colors start to mush together. So I'm just gonna dab it on a paper towel just to get some of the excess water out. So this pedal right here is not bright enough for me. So I'm gonna just go over it and make it a little more vibrant, okay? And then I'm gonna do these side pedals. So I'm gonna start here. Okay, I'm gonna start here. Come down and over. Let me drag it a little more across like that better and then right here how can i do this so you guys can see uh, michelle asked a question um when reloading do you recommend dipping in a water pot or using spray spritz bottle um well i usually just dip in the water but like you're dipping when you dip in the water you're using just the very very tip of the brush okay, right here like you're just touching it like that. You're using very little water because you don't want it to start pooling on the bottom. 
but spritzing is also an option. I just like to keep my kit really compact. So I I would end up losing a spritz bottle. If it, can, if it doesn't fit in my box, then I can't take it with me because it'll get lost. So now I'm gonna do the other side, only using the top of my brush. I'm gonna rotate it and go in like that. So those are the two front petals. Sometimes if you do a rose, you'll have a lot of space down here. And I feel like that looks a little strange. So you can always add a third. I'm gonna make this one a little bit brighter. And you can always add a third petal, just like this. So you're just making a tiny little petal just by pushing down and dragging only the top to the side. So here we go. So that's a rose. And I did this one to the side also to show you that this is also a rose, just not at the fully bloomed state that this first one is in. So you have a fully bloomed rose here, then you have a smaller one up here, and then you can make an even smaller one just by doing the first step. So that's like a rosebud, a teenager rose, and a full grown one right here. So now to show you quickly how I use that in a design. I usually use all three of them. So I'll put three, four, five. I'll put the big one here since the cheek usually has the most space. I'll put it here and then I'll go slightly on top. Gilbert says face. that was a beautiful rose. Thank you. With the middle rose, like this. Kathy, which, uh, you know, when, when a new face painter is doing these kind of things, what problems do they have mostly? Um, so the problems I usually have are people going backwards with the brushes. So instead of going like this, the way the bristles are flowing, mm -hmm. they'll try to come this way. Mm. That's, that's not going to work. I mean, it could, but you're just making your life hard. Right. Um, also... I'm left-handed, so when I'm showing a lot of my students, I have to remind them to go this way with their brush because they're going to be using this hand. Mm -hmm. So I can show you. I've gotten pretty good at using my right hand for stuff. You're ambidextrous. <laughs> yeah. So if you're right-handed, your petals are going to go like this. And if I'm left-handed, your petals are going to go this way right to left. So can you guys see the difference? So you're going left to right if you're right-handed, right to left if you're left-handed. And also having too much water on your brush is a big issue. Because then when you start to do the inside over here, things start to get mushy. And if you don't let this dry, um, it's just not gonna work out as well as you would have liked. Mm -hmm. So real quick, I'm going to do that, come around the middle. Gilbert, Gilbert said you also have to make sure that the highlights are on the top. Right, exactly. They, they tend to do the, the flowers, load the brush backwards. If you're using a flat one like this, then it doesn't matter which side you load the brush as long as you're holding it the right way. But if you're using an angle one like this, it's a much better idea to get the lighter color on the longer end of the brush. Okay, so, so there's a rose here. 
And let's do some leaves real quick. Because who does flowers without leaves? Who does flowers without leaves? All right, so I'm going to get a smaller chisel brush. This one is called Romantic Rose, but I'm going to say it's a, a half inch mm -hmm. chisel brush. And I'm going to use this green. I really like this green. You can go a little bit lighter with your flowers by using the bottom three colors, or you can have your flowers with a slightly more definition if you're going to go on the top. I usually use the darker part. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure you just get a tiny bit of the super dark green because you don't need the whole thing being very dark. And for here, I'm just going to push the brush down, wiggle it a little bit to make a leaf going down that way. And I'm going here. For here, this is usually what rose uh, leaves look like. like Oh, I need to reload. Okay, so rose leaves have these like spikes on the sides, mm -hmm. kind of like that. So mm. for Gilbert always has problems with leaves. Oh yeah, leaves are difficult. Once uh, once you get the petals, the petals are easy because they're just like a circular motion. But the leaves, you have to rotate your brush. So if you start here, you're going to end here. So you're going to start right here. And you're going to make tiny little zigzag motions until your brush ends horizontal. And then you're going to start. Yeah, Sherry has the same problem with her leaves as well. Right here. And then you're going to rotate the brush the other way so that you meet it at the bottom. So that's usually what rose leaves look like. So I'll add a couple right here. Like that. And you can overlap them as well. Usually I'll overlap tiny bit and just use this, uh, the darker end of your brush. Oh, wait, see that. Okay. Use the darker end of your brush to draw the line for the middle of the leaf. So there's no need to, to go back with another uh, round brush just to define your leaves. Gilbert sometimes ruins his rose by adding leaves. Sometimes. <laughs> Well, the trick is to add them in between two petals so they look like they're coming from behind. You could also do the leaves first and then the flower, but that can people sometimes because you have to have the flower placed exactly right to make mm -hmm. it make sense. Uh, Sherry says, I need help with my leaves. Should the leaves be always pointing in a certain direction? Um, no. The short answer is no. But the long answer would be you want your design to flow. So for the side of the face, this should be going up this way, like towards this way, and then you want this side going down towards this way. So if I was going to add some more leaves up here, they'd be going up towards that direction so that everything kind of flows. And then the last step for this design would be always, you know, the flourishes. I'm going to take the same uh, brown brush and I'm just going to add some teardrops here and there. And you can throw some dots in 
wherever you feel they would like to work. Okay. So there's an example of a rose design you can do. You could also do a big rose on the forehead with two of these pointing in either direction. I'll make a nice mask and then you have some teardrops coming up over here. You can do a whole bunch of stuff with roses. Okay, so. Also, sometimes when I do roses, I'll add some of these flowers around like in little areas like here or there and it uh, in a different color usually. So it adds some interest and um, you know, make your design look a little cooler. Hmm. So now it looks like a garden of roses or a bouquet of flowers instead of just a couple of roses. Well, let's um, uh, Michelle wanted to get um, a demonstrating swirls and lines incorporated with flower designs. I have the hardest time with those. So sorry for asking for so many questions. Don't be sorry, Michelle. No, we love your questions. We love the questions. Okay. So let's do, let me see what else I can do that can incorporate uh, some swirls. Uh, I think an orchid, we can do like an orchid design with some swirls. Okay. An orchid is also pretty easy. Um, so let's do some blue, green, purple orchids. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn it this way so that the dark is on the inside again. If I remember correctly, that's usually where the dark part of the orchid is on the inside. And the brush. So we're going to start with, oh, hold on, this one go back. He likes the, um, that color, Gilbert does, uh, the purple has a shimmer in it. Yeah, the purple is, is like a metallic-y purple. And I think the blue is, yeah, the blue is also, the first blue is also kind of metallic-y. It's very pretty. It's like a peacock, almost. So we're going to start with. One petal on the top, and we're gonna do one on the right bottom, and one on the bottom left. So these are your, your three starter petals for the orchid. It should look like this. And let me reload a little bit because I'm working. So I'm going to overlap. And you want to make sure your colors are crisp. So for the overlap, you're going to come to the side of the first petal you did. And you're going to go around and kind of overlap the bottom one. You're going to do the same thing over here. You're going to come around and overlap the bottom, kind of like ears. Almost like that. And then let's use yellow because I already have loaded. And so what's different from an orchid from a rose? Just the colors? Um no, you can do any anything in any color, really. It's just mm -hmm. that the petal placement is a little different. Mm -hmm. So for an orchid, you have a smaller petal up here, and then you have two that are underneath that are also small, and then these here are going to be bigger than the other three, and they're going to go on top of these smaller ones here. Uh -huh. And then you also have the inside is different. So they have, orchids usually have these tiny, I guess, I don't know, maybe they're stamen also? 
you know, in the middle. You know, kind of like that. Okay. Yeah. This one, maybe I should have chosen a different color because you can't see the petals as well as on the roses. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. Gilbert thinks it's a great demo. Thank you. All right, so we can add some swirls. Like pretend this was an arm design. Because the flower is so big, you're going to want to go pretty big with the swirls. And uh, let's do one here. So I'm going to start thin, come down, add some pressure, and go around. And then I'm going to come on the side of this one. Let me do it this way so you can see. And make some teardrops going in this way. And you can even connect them a little bit. Like that. And clean this up a tiny bit. There you go. And then so these are going down this way like this. So I'm going to continue that by making these come this way. And that's kind of how you can balance your design is by making like an S shape. So these are going to come like this and then you're going to end the bottom ones going that way. And then I always like to fill in with dots in various places. And you could also outline the orchid itself if you wanted it to have more definition. Okay. Let me see. Where is oh. I'm gonna get a brush really quick. There's a very small round brush. It's a number three swirl. I get the black. I really like the black because this black is very black. It's opaque and um, it just glides. It's really good for line work. Okay, so I'm just going to outline this. And you want to go really thin as you're going into the inside of the flower and have your outline to be a little bit thicker towards the outside. And come here. And make sure you follow your petals. As you can see that this one is on top of the one that's under here. And this is just like a really quick outline. Just to show you a little bit more how the petals are placed. When if I was at work, I wouldn't be outlining this. Okay, so that one's done. We have like less than 10 minutes. So let me go through the other flowers. I think I have, let's see if we can do one, two. Three. We can do three more. That would be good. And let's do, let's use this really nice pink for a calla lily. And I'm using a regular not angled chisel brush just because I don't want to rinse the other one. And calla lilies are super easy to do also. Um, let's put them on a the face. So you're going to go like this. And kind of come down on the other side. And then you're going to go right in front. 
and kind of close that loop. I'm gonna do another one here. Do one upside down. So you're gonna start in, you can start in the middle or on the side, doesn't really matter. Like this. I'll have to turn it over because my brush doesn't reach. Like this. And then you're gonna put your brush right here at the end of where you started that petal. Go down and come around to close it. If you have a little spot here that doesn't have paint in it, no big deal because we're going to come back with yellow again. And kind of put a thick teardrop right there. And do the same thing to the bottom. that's what the stamen of a calla lily looks like. And calla lily leaves are longer, I believe, than, let's say, a rose. So they kind of go like this. Gabby asked, um, what, just wondering what brand, the white and the black you're using. Oh, so everything I'm using today is Praise Effects. It's a new line that you can find on facepaint.com. If you use code KathyV20, you get 20% off only today. Only today? Well, tomorrow until 7 o'clock. Well, yeah, only for 24 hours. Exactly. There we go. So... Let me turn this around. I'll give you a link, Gabby. Um, here, here. Let me use my right hand. Help you guys out a little bit. All right, don't judge me if these are ugly, because I'm not right-handed. There. Oh, pretty good. Okay. And. There we go. So those are what cat lilies look like. And then you could just put a few dots and some, maybe some teardrops in the middle to finish off this design. I'd probably put a few dots here. Yeah. So we're gonna try to do this every two weeks. Um, what's our next one gonna be? Hmm, that's a good question. That's the good next question. one, Maybe we can do like sea animals. Okay. Because I know a lot like shark, dolphin, fish, crab. Those are all that I get requested for often. Mm -hmm. Or if people probably like this better, uh, unicorns. Oh, uh, you can't go wrong with unicorns. Yeah, because unicorns are like super popular. I don't think they'll ever stop being popular. Um, let's see. We can do unicorns and like, you know, rainbows, because rainbows always accompany unicorns. So request for butterflies, but unicorns seems to be popular. So we'll go with unicorns and maybe we'll do butterflies after that. Oh yeah, butterflies. We touched on butterflies at the last one. I think you can still watch them, can you? Yeah, they're on Facebook Live um, and you can see them. Okay, yeah, so you can look at our last, um, our last class had a few, um, had a, a half butterfly, half simple and half a little bit, you know, more um, advanced butterfly. You can check that out. All right, now I'm going to do a daisy really quick, and that's basically the last one. I also had a violet on the list. I don't think we're going to get to that one. No, it's very close to an orchid. So if you look, you can Google violet and use the same technique I did with the orchid. And all you do is flip the brush so that your dark is on the outside for the bottom two petals. That's basically it. So let's do a daisy really quick while we have like one minute. So oh, one I'm minute daisy. Load my brush up with white. And then let's take a tiny bit of blue 
So we'll use a lighter blue just for shadow sake because daisies are usually just white. Um, let me try to use my arm because this will go a lot faster here. Okay. So we're going to basically make a bunch of teardrops around a circle. So you can lightly sketch out where you want your, the inside of your daisy to be. And I like to go around my circle once every, you know, all four corners. And then let's fill in those spaces like that. I reload my brush, getting a little dry. And then I'm gonna fill in the areas that don't have anything. And I'm just using the blue in the inside so that you can kind of get a better definition of the petals because if you're just using white, they're all gonna get lost and it's gonna look kind of mushy. So if you want it to be really defined, you'd use more blue in the ones that you did first and then get lighter as you come forward. Okay, so you can just go around and darken up any petals that aren't cooperating. And then you come back with, you guessed it, yellow. And now we're just gonna do dots. So you want these dots to mush together to kind of texture the middle of the flower. And because this is all one color, it's not very textured. So what you do is you double load, just like we did with the forget-me-nots, a little bit of brown. And now, you have some texture in the middle of your daisy. Okay, and then right after that, I'm going to get a little bit of white on the same exact brush and just uh, a couple of highlights. A question from Sherry. Do you, when, do you, when you're painting large groups, do you have brushes already preloaded to save time? Um, before I start the event, no, because then they'll just get dry and you'll have to end up reloading it anyway. But what I do is I have a different brush for every color. Um, here, let me see, so you guys can see what I'm working with. Oops. Get the lizard. Brush lizard, which in my opinion is a necessity. Cool. I have my brush lizard here, it holds all my brushes. And I have, see, I have a yellow brush here. I use a smaller for the white and the black. I have the ones I use for the flowers. This is my leaf brush right here. So I have all of them here. And when I do a design, I'll just, um, you know, like let's say I did a rose with this brush. So I did the rose, I'm gonna do the, the leaves with this one. And then if I have to do another rose or another flower, I'll go right back and just wet this same brush over again and use it for the same slit cake. If I want to use a different slit cake, then I'll grab another brush. So if I was going to come and do a rainbow, I just use another brush, do the rainbow, and then stick it right back in here so that the next time somebody wants a rainbow, I take the same exact rainbow brush reload it and just do the design. This is good because it saves time and it also prevents your water from getting dirty. So if you're just using your water to dip every now and then, instead of rinsing a whole brush and washing it out every time, your water is going to stay clean. And that, you know, overall just makes your setup look nicer. So. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, that is, that's a great tip. That's a great question, too. Um, so thank you very much. Um, same bad time, same bad channel. Uh, two yeah. weeks from now? Okay. Let's do it. I hope to see you guys at the next class. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, 
tell everybody about it. We'll do exactly the same time. And, um, and thank you, Kathy. This was terrific. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Oh, thank you, Sherry, Dee Mercedes, Christy, Gabby. And on our Facebook thing, Gilbert, and all, the, all our friends, and Nicole, and, uh, of course, Humor. Humor's there, too. Um, so thank you, everybody. Oh, let me put um, my Instagram so you guys can follow me and get notifications for the, the next time I do a class. I always put it on my story. Okay. I'll put that in, um, uh, so it's, okay, the code is, oh yes, and to answer the question, the code is Kathy V 20 Yep, and that'll get you 20% off of these. The single color one is 25 and the rainbow cake one, I believe you said 45 Uh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. 45 huh? So, buy early, buy often. Okay. Great. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.